Hey, um, we're back for video number three. This is going to be a quick talk about dealing with volume um, in MIDI instruments in general and uh, with um, Finale and VSL in particular. So when it comes to controlling the volume of MIDI instruments, it's a little bit confusing. Um, there are two basic ways um, that volume of MIDI instruments is controlled. One is velocity, and that means the strength of the attack. So if you imagine a piano keyboard, um, how hard you hit it. And the other is via a controller. Um, and that usually has to do with when you're dealing with a sustaining instrument and you want to change the volume of the instrument after um, the initial attack. Um, now, um, it's a little confusing how this works in Finale and in other situations as well. And the thing to... Um, understand is when I talk about a controller, a controller is, I'm looking at the, at the Vienna Instruments um, interface right now, a controller is just a dial. Uh, you can imagine it a dial or a fader, um, and traditionally in MIDI there are, uh, there are up to 127 different possible controller channels that you can use um, to send different values. For instance, um, the sustain pedal um, is traditionally asso associated, I think it's uh, controller number 63, um, and there are certain associations um, with different controllers. Um, there is modulation, uh, which m a lot of keyboards have a mod wheel, and often um, that's controller number one. Um, and then there's, uh, in Vienna Symphonic uh, Library, you see there's a volume control here, um, and then there's expression which is here. Now in Vienna Instruments, I can, if I choose Control Map, by the way, um, I've switched to, to be able to see all this, I've switched up here from Basic to Advanced View. And um, if I choose Control Map, I can see what controller, CC is for controller, um, is assigned to which of the different parameters that you can control from within um, Vienna Instruments. And I see here volume is controlled, uh, is set to CC7 or controller 7. That is standard, by the way, usually volume is 7. And also standard, um, and when I say standard, I mean this is a traditional MIDI assignment. So in other MIDI instruments, you'd expect to see this too. Then there's something called expression, um, which is CC11. And it's really important to understand from the outset that volume and expression are exactly the same thing. They're two different volume knobs. You might want, for some reason, to have, say, a master volume control, you know, which is this, and then one that you might tie to dynamic playback expression. And I'm using a keyboard right now to control um, these different. I have one fader set to CC7 for volume and one um, to expression. I'm gonna play from our violin patch. There's a sound, and you'll hear volume Let's me bring the volume up. And now if I take the expression down, these actually do the exact same thing. They do the exact same thing. Now, when it comes to these instruments, um, this is the Vienna Special um, Edition. You can see up here about the patch that there are there's something called velocity layers, right? And um, the sustain patch, for instance, of the violin, has three velocity layers. Um, now, when I move the volume up and down, um, that's not affecting um, the velocity layer. A velocity layer means the instrument was actually sampled at three different volumes, because you understand that an instrument playing loud is not just louder because the volume is higher, but there's a different sound of a loud instrument, um, more pressure on the bow and you know more intensity. Um, and so if we control volume exclusively by using the volume or the expression uh, controllers, we're not actually controlling the real volume of the instrument. We're making it louder or softer the way you might in a mix, right? If you were just mixing audio, but we're not simulating the intensity of the performance. Um, there is a way to do that, however, um, and that's this thing called velocity crossfade. And in Vienna Instruments, if velocity crossfade is off as it is now, then 
um, it's the velocity that's going to control the dynamic. So what I just did on my keyboard, I'm going to push really hard and I'm going to push really soft. And you can hear that there's a difference because what's determining volume right now is velocity and there is no control after the initial attack. Um, except if I were using um, expression to control dynamics and I could do something like this, I could do like... And you see that the, the sound sort of stays the same, but I can control the, the volume. But for an instrument like the violin, what I would recommend is actually to use velocity crossfade. Um, and what that simply is, is a different way of controlling volume. So it, it seems generally that Vienna Instruments defaults to having this unchecked. Um, I recommend, and where I am now is I go from basic to advanced view. And under Perform, this tab, I have this option to click Velocity Crossfade, and I'm going to check it. Um, and now you'll notice that now I'm going to hit the, the at various different um, volumes. This is soft. This is hard. Nothing makes a difference. My touch-sensitive keyboard is not making a difference. What's going to make a difference is this fader, the Velocity Crossfade switch. Um, which I also, let's see, that's, I have it, um, I think I have it assigned to, um, I thought I had it assigned to one of my, um, to one of my faders here, but apparently I, I don't. Um, oh, you know what? I, um, I'll tell you why I don't. I'll tell you why I don't. I remember why. Um, I need to change this. So if I go to control map, you see that velocity crossfade is set to controller number two. I am going to change that. And this is a, a, how I work, and you'll see how this connects with Finale. I actually set Velocity Crossfade to controller. I highlight it, and I'm going to set it to controller number one. And what that does is it, it, it hooks it up to my mod wheel, right? So I've got the mod wheel now that I'm moving. And you'll see, um, you can see here that it's going up and down. And when I switch to perform, I'm controlling this up and down. And now I'm going to play a note. And what's happening when it gets louder here is I'm actually simulating more pressure on the bow. Um, now, it's possible to do both. We could be controlling both, and my volume got nudged down a little bit. Um, um, but in general, I prefer usually to use the velocity crossfade. And this is one area where the special edition instruments don't have always as many velocity layers. Um, the quality of a sample is often determined by, um, or the in-depth quality is the number of velocity, velocity layers. So, but three is plenty for sustain here. Um, but now the question is, how do I get Finale um, to, to play back? And I'm going back to our file that we've been working with here. And right now you'll see that I have no um, dynamics assigned. Boy, that's quiet. That's really quiet. Okay, um, and what it's doing there, because there's no assignment, um, velocity uh, crossfade um, is relatively high. Um, let's see, maybe just my headphones are quiet. Hard to say. But what I want to do here is I want to get my dynamics and my crescendos and things like that to affect the velocity crossfade. That's how I want to control my volume. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into human playback and into the human playback preferences. And this is my, this is the one we've been working with, which I called VSL SE Demo HP for human playback preferences. And what I want to choose now is the dynamics and volume tab here. And this is set to, this is a little bit confusing. This is set to automatic. I'm going to leave that for now. I'll be honest. I don't fully understand how this works. I think automatic has to do, or this is actually just applying to crescendo and diminuendo. So um, we're going to leave that alone for right now. You can control the extent to which the emphasis um, is made. But over here, for dynamic approach for sustaining instruments, um, you have several choices. And you'll note that it defaults to CC11 plus velocity. That means if I have a crescendo, what it's going to do is it's going to increase the value sent um, in controller 11. And you'll recall that I set over here my... Um, my velocity crossfade to CC1, and that's how I want to control my volume. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to select instead, I'm not going to choose automatic, 
Um, nobody knows what that does. Um, I'm not going to choose seven. I'm going to use one. Oops, sorry, I, I missed it. I'm going to use velocity CC one. I'm going to leave base velocity at 80. We'll talk about that at another time. Um, and um, let's see what happens. Let's apply it. I don't think you have to, you could just click OK. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, put a little, um, some dynamics in. So I'm going to start with maybe a piano dynamic. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a um, crescendo. Um, and let's crescendo all the way to uh, forte here. Um, and then let's have a diminuendo over under this. And, you know, I promise you at some point in these... Um, in these demos, I'll work with a more compelling piece of music because I imagine that might be interesting. Um, and I'll make the screen a little bigger here in Finale so we can we can see that. Um, and now what I want to do is I want to play it back and I want to watch here. I want, let's see if I can try to get these both um, to sort of coexist on a single screen. What I want to do is I want you to watch the velocity crossfade dial here. Um, as we play back this example. And <laughs> it might require some kind of fiddling with. Um, and I noticed that like my pits um, patch um, feels a little quiet right now, but we will talk about that in another video. We can actually um, deal with the different um, lengths, uh, sorry, the different volumes of the different patches, which is something that's great about Vienna instruments. But right now, this is basically how I'm going to do it. And what I would recommend you do, um, what I often do is I, um, I like to leave these volume and um, expression around 100. And you will discover um, in time that Finale sometimes sends messages uh, to Vienna Instruments on CC7 or CC11, even if you've asked it not to. Um, so there are ways to deal with that. For right now, I'm going to leave that for a later video. And I'm just going to um, I'm just going to leave off here with the idea that in general, we're going to set this velocity crossfade um, to on and I'm assigning it to CC1. Um, you'll note one other thing is that velocity crossfade on and off has a CC controller too. And what that means, it's it's CC28, you can change it to whatever you want, but what that means is that you can actually turn velocity crossfade on and off. Um, and that is actually a very powerful feature that we'll look at a little bit later um, because Vienna Symphonic Library, for instance, has uh, sampled, um, has sampled, um, instruments that, you know, sample diminuendos and crescendos. So for now, I'll leave it off, but um, more soon. Bye-bye.